In this video, I'm going to go through an unboxing very quickly, actually, um, because there's not really a whole lot in this box. But this is the Cherry MX 10.0 N RGB keyboard, and there isn't a whole lot in the box other than the keyboard itself, really. And we're not expecting too much else inside here. So this is the mechanical low profile keyboard. And so let's have a look inside and see what we have. I will tell you that uh, I did order this keyboard off of Amazon. Uh, the protection that was offered uh, I found to be a little concerning. Um, the keyboard itself should still be okay, but it just came with this box in a plastic bag. Uh, I've received many other keyboards that have uh, a lot better uh, protection as far as the uh, boxing of the keyboard itself is concerned and quite often it's a box within a box with uh, little uh, pouched, pouched air bags and uh, this had none of that so we'll see what's inside. Um, this keyboard does use the Cherry MX low profile speed linear switches so we'll have a look and see what the keyboard looks like. I apologize for that. We'll let the camera tune in here. So we can see we have the Cherry documentation. This is the warranty card. And I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And then we also have another brochure here. You just got to find out where the English is for me. So this is the operating manual and we can see we have the English portion here. Um, there are a few safety tips there connecting the keyboard and uh, it is basically a plug-in to the uh, USB port of the PC. So Let's take it out of the box and see what it looks like. There's a few other things in here that will tell us how to uh, work with the keyboard uh, to change the lighting settings and so on. So I am going to set that aside for now. So this is basically it. Uh, the keyboard itself is extremely thin. Maybe it doesn't need a whole lot of extra protection. Um, but it's essentially a tissue paper wrap. It is a black tissue paper wrap. And that's pretty much all there is here. So let's just take it out of the wrap for a moment. You can see here we have the keyboard. And I think I'm going to bring in just a little more lighting here. see here we have the keyboard and it is a very very thin keyboard inside the box otherwise this is it we have our connecting cable now the cable itself has a USB A and a USB C port um, obviously the uh, cable is even relatively cheap all things considered uh, just a plastic cable not a whole lot to it uh, some of the higher premium keyboards typically have a nice braided cable but uh, I'm sure this works just fine and perhaps the people at Cherry just think it's overkill uh, to provide a nice braided cable 
but uh, the cable itself is is a fair length, right? Um, it will make the distance as far as that goes. And then I'm just going to set it aside here for a minute. And then we do have the keyboard itself, which I've already had in my hands. So keyboard itself, if you can see the lettering here, it's actually not too bad. Kind of hard to see without uh, the backlighting. Um, it almost looks like a gray on a gray on black, so to speak, but uh, I'm sure it lights up uh, quite a bit differently. And of course, we have the Cherry logo here, and it has a little protective film on it, which we can remove. There we go. So the film itself has been removed, and as I mentioned, the keyboard itself is extremely thin. There is not a whole lot to this. Um, this is a full back hinge keyboard support and I've read different things in the reviews as to what this support um, is like to work with. I guess we'll have a chance to see for ourselves but it automatically returns to its home position. So if I just release it here on the back side it automatically closes. So if you're pushing your keyboard forward you may actually end up closing the keyboard itself or the, the step at the back. So something to keep in mind. But outside of that, fairly straightforward. Keys seem relatively quiet. And the reason why we got this keyboard is uh, obviously Cherry makes switches but just because they make switches that doesn't mean they can make keyboards um, and we're about to find that out so maybe they can obviously they can make keyboards but let's find out uh, what the quality of this keyboard is like I do like the low profile keys I do like the strength of this keyboard despite how thin it is um, I have to say this is probably one of the thinnest keyboards I've laid my hands on uh, for quite some time and one of the things that I should point out here is it looks like there is a film across the front here of some sort so I will remove this because I'm pretty sure there is probably some lighting effect or something along that line so we'll take that for what it is but let's get rid of the box um, there really isn't a whole lot else to see as far as the box itself is concerned. Okay, so just little pictures on the end. Set that down, and another image here on the end of the on the end of the box, but nothing else. Pretty pretty plain chain as far as that goes. Opening the box, there wasn't too much to it. There's a couple pieces of tape here that uh, secure the box uh, for shipping. But like I say, that's pretty much it. There is not a lot to see uh, with regard to the packaging. Um, I, on one hand, I was a little disappointed, but the keyboard itself looks like it's in uh, in pretty good shape. So I guess this is part of helping us save the planet. So we will take the keyboard and we can plug it in and see what happens. All right, so how do we do that? Well, I don't think it's too difficult. USB-C port goes here in the back. So we will plug that in. And I will tell you, it is very tight. There we go. Takes a bit to posture it in there or position it in there, but it is in there. And even with the uh, keyboard uh, back leg here, I don't know what we would actually call this, but uh, the back support here, not a whole lot of distance um, between the USB C uh, connection point and the back lip here on this leg. 
so it's not likely that you can just take any USB-C cable and plug it into the back of the keyboard itself. All right, we'll get this set up. We do have a little bit of protective wrap here on the USB-A and uh, really don't have to take that off at this point, but it does have the Cherry logo under there and I don't have much for nails to try to, there we go, okay. It has slipped off, so you can see the Cherry logo here and we'll just slip this over to our USB port. Okay, the keyboard has plugged in and you can see what we're looking at here. So the keyboard itself um, looks nice. The, the keys themselves, I noticed they're, they're very square. Uh, compared to some other keycaps that are out there, um, these are very square and like a full footprint. So rather than having uh, a little more of a taper to the top uh, to create a smaller cap top, um, it is what it is. But uh, for the most part here, um, we do have media control keys we also have the calculator key over here and uh, so we have volume down, mute, volume up and escape key uh, let's just see how the key keys feel as far as the, 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 the look and feel of the keyboard all right, very quiet it is a very quiet keyboard so let's bring it up for a t uh, typing test. The one that always concerns me is when the caps lock key and the A key, it just seemed kind of close. I just felt it now that even as I'm pushing down on the A key, very close to the caps lock key. And that may or may not be a good thing for us, but um, having said that, I'm going to uh, bring something up on the my screen here just to give it a bit of a, a challenge typing test uh, out of the box as it is and let's see what we got wow very quiet very quiet that was 126 words per minute right there um, I know it's just a short burst, but wow, it is very quiet. Great. Feels pretty good. Feels very good. The the only thing I if I do have anything, it's just the keys just feel like they're on top of one another here, and I I think you know center to center uh, they're probably okay. I'm not sure if the pitch here is a little bit different than the, the pitch of some of the other keyboards. That is something that I I might take a look at here. But um, anyway, it feels really good. Uh, very quiet. It's uh, it's quite nice and I should actually turn the um, the overhead lights off just a little bit so you can see it here but um, we have a uh, wind lock function this is the function key here um, this is working as a menu key which is great uh, we have the wind key control key and most of the other keys are are where they belong um, I like the sound of the, the space bar. It, it's great. I really, 
I really like the profile of the uh, of the keys and the typing speed is not that bad I'm not sure quite what the displacement is for the uh, for the keys as far as the switches are concerned but I believe it's one millimeter I might be wrong it could be one or 1 1.2 um, but uh, the overall travel doesn't feel too bad either so uh, there could be an advantage to using this if you're used to a full height key cap uh, that's one thing but I actually like the low profile keys and I'm just gonna push this forward just to see what happens and you can see the the back leg is dug in so as I push this forward theoretically I I'm changing the angle of the keyboard right now I'm not sure how stable it is as I do that but the bottom line is I could even type on it like this if I wished think that's the intent of this and I don't like doing that anyway but um, I can see the tendency for this as I push it forward okay so it just collapsed the leg uh, on the back side so anyway overall very thin I, I really really have to say I, I do like the profile of this um, it's quite remarkable and one nice thing to note is the uh, lighting effects are not overpowering, at least when I initially plug it in. I'm just going to hit the overhead here so maybe we get a better shot at the, at the lights themselves. And it looks like I still have enough backlight here that, uh, yeah, so you can actually see the patterns here. I'm just going to go through and see what we have in our operating in our operating guide here, and maybe there's a few things I can I can bring up, but I'm not expecting too much. Um, so we can switch the backlighting on or off, um, which I guess is good. Let's just see what we have. So that's function F3. So function F3. I see. So they have one keyboard diagram. And depending on what language you're speaking. So the diagram is here with the various uh, key functions that are called up. And uh, depending on what language you speak, uh, you basically have to be able to relate back to the diagram that's shown here. And it looks like they cover a lot of different languages, right? So both sides looks like identical, uh, identical instructions. Again, it just depends on what language you speak. So since I am on the English side of things, um, our portion of the instruction sheet is here, All right? Just this column and this column here. So I'm going to go through this. I'll pause the video for a little bit and then uh, we will give it an update um, just to run through the functions real fast. All right. So I've gone through the manual and there are a lot of different things with regard to the lighting effects that are available to us and really anything else um, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned um, I, I can step through those real quick and so we can change the lighting effects with the function F3 key here and we can see the, the keyboard is going to have uh, different lighting effects I'm gonna just dim the overheads here so we can see some of the effects that are happening and so we can cycle through these we can see what's happening here All right so that's kind of neat different effect we have a wave and that's so this is cool. Anytime I 
press a key, the row that the key was actually pressed in will light up. So that is a pretty nifty effect. And we can do a little more here. So I pressed F3 again. This here, now every time I, I hit a key, the entire keyboard goes for a blast. This is neat. Also, as I type a letter, it basically has a, it lights up and then goes into a little bit of a, a dim after that. Right. That's kind of nice. Okay, that's neat. Okay, now we have a solid color. Okay. We have a solid color here. Now, according to the documentation, when we get to this point, we can actually change the colors. Um, so, the bottom line is that uh, in this mode here, this is actually going to allow us to set uh, colors for single key illumination. So, if we switch to single key illumination like we just did, we cycled through all of the F3. lighting effects and when we arrive at the point where cycling through brings us to this where we have the WASD lit up and the arrow keys now we're in a situation where if we press function end so I'm going to press function end and we can see that we have these lights flashing now, All right? And what we can do is we can press the key uh, that we want the illumination to change up on, and uh, and that's it. And we can change the color of uh, other keys as necessary as well. So after we've done that, uh, all we have to do is press function and again function and again and we're okay so I can have my caps lock for example probably come up in green my windows key I keep cycling through that that can come up in green scroll lock and num lock it's in green keep that in green as well. So now I can press function end and I can see that these keys are now green. If I press function again I can change the color of any other key also. I really want to keep it the same as what I've already got here and that's not it that is but let's say I wanted my F key to show up ah, maybe purple purple like that so my F key is showing in purple and I want my H key to show up in purple for whatever reason Okay, so let's see what happens now as I process through. Everything else is pretty much remaining the same. You can see we're kind of breathing through the different colors.
Now, when all the keys are the same color, like this, then we can do different things. So, bottom line is that uh, in this particular case here, when a single color appears, um, if I press the function plus the space bar, you can see that all of these keys now have a different range of colors uh, that are there. And we can change the color of other keys if necessary, but I can press the key whose illumination I want to change uh, until it lights up in the color that I'm looking for. Um, or what do we do here? So press the function plus the space bar, function plus the space bar, and the keys will light up in different colors, which they have. And then we can press the key with the desired color, and all single color, color effects now light up in that color. So I am going to pick, um, I don't know, I'm going to pick blue. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll pick purple. see here. Let's try that again. I'm going to pick purple. So now we can see everything is there and it's purple. All right. And that is pretty cool. So anyway, all of the single color effects will now light up in purple. That's it. pretty neat. This is pretty neat. So this is the single color effect right where it's just breathing, getting brighter and dimmer. So kind of nice effects. Um, I really don't like spending too much time playing with colors. I don't need the colors to help my keyboard experience become an awesome keyboard experience but uh, sometimes you know if I'm doing other things and not working on my computer uh, sometimes it's not a bad thing uh, just to see the keyboard glowing in the background. Uh, it sort of sets some room ambiance as far as that goes. But uh, that's pretty much it. If we want to reset the keyboard to its original factory delivery settings, all we have to do is press the function key and the pause key for at least five seconds. And the pause key is here. So whatever the factory settings were, there we go. Okay, five seconds, we can see that everything got triggered back. So that is pretty much it. As far as cleaning the keyboard up is concerned, uh, obviously we can unplug the keyboard. Um, if you are going to clean the keyboard, use a slightly dampened cloth and a very mild detergent, uh, something like uh, dishwashing liquid. But uh, don't use harsh chemicals as that may damage the keyboard and it may damage it permanently. And if you are uh, using a damp cloth, uh, make sure you dry it off with a soft lint-free cloth. If the keyboard itself is not working, uh, there's a few things to try. Number one, uh, you can unplug it and plug it back in to the same USB port. Sometimes that may be necessary. Uh, you may want to try another USB port. And of course, you can always try the keyboard on another PC if you happen to have one nearby. And last but not least, uh, you may have a BIOS setting and uh, you may have to switch that out so that uh, USB keyboard support is enabled. Or you may have to use uh, a different setting, USB legacy mode, um, and set that to enabled. But uh, if the keyboard is not working outright, uh, that is something that you may want to take a look at. Uh, if there ever does come a day where you have to get rid of the keyboard and dispose of it, just follow your local best practices. Uh, here in Canada, we have uh, some fairly aggressive recycling programs, so follow best practices and whatever the requirements are um, from a legal perspective. Outside of that, uh, the keyboard itself draws a 5-volt DC uh, supply, 
and uh, current consumption is 500 milliamps so it's not too bad if you are going to have to store this keyboard minus 20 to 60 degrees Celsius and uh, bottom line is that if you're going to bring it in and actually start using the keyboard itself operating temperature is anywhere from 0 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius uh, or centigrade depending on how you wish to pronounce that um, but uh, that is pretty much our out of the box and initial review um, there are a few other things that we can check here uh, as far as the uh, making the lighting brighter or dimmer um, we do have lighting effects on or off with function f4 and with function f5 we can make it dimmer function f6 we can make it much brighter I'm not sure if you can see that but function f6 makes it much much brighter and if there is a pattern that's uh, happening here um, we have we can slow this down or we can speed it up so, so we can slow it down with function F7 and we can speed it up with function F8 so you can see that this waveform is really going across the uh, the keyboard rather quickly I'm not sure how fast the fastest is we, there seems to be little indicators here that uh, suggest when we're, we're hitting that speed and if I want to slow it down function F7 will slow everything down all right, so now it's just kind of very slowly moving. Then we have the function win lock, or function F9, which is the win lock function. So what that will do, um, it will either enable or disable the Windows key, which is over here. We also have the menu key. Alt F4 will get uh, disabled. And if you use the Alt tab, uh, that will also be disabled and control alt delete will also be disabled so when it's on uh, we can see that the uh, various keys turn red so we know that they've actually been disabled and if i hit f9 again we're back to normal right so that allows us it's, it's good for gamers for the most part uh, sometimes they don't want to hit these keys accidentally because it could trigger other things to happen on the screen uh, which isn't great and of course control alt delete is the task manager and sometimes when you hit control alt delete that actually gives you the opportunity to shut down various applications which we may not necessarily want to do or it could just disrupt uh, an application that you're currently working on and you have to deal with the with the task manager as far as the other functions are concerned, um, we have the media playback keys uh, or the media control keys here. So this uh, function F10, function F10 will go to the previous title. Function, function F11 is the uh, next title. And then of course we have a play pause uh, button here. and uh, we also have the volume down, volume mute, and volume up buttons here. And we also have the calculator key here, which will bring up a little calculator on the screen. So that's pretty much the functionality uh, that we have here. Um, again, function key plus end will start and end a setting mode for single key illumination. Um, the pressing the function key plus any one of these uh, function keys that we have here on the uh, keyboard um, the sub functions are obviously going to work for us and then the uh, function key plus the spacebar once again that will allow us to set the mode for single color lighting effects and uh, we just got to remember that we have to get to a single color stage uh, by pressing 
function f3 and cycling through until we, we get to that point. Outside of that, um, there's really not a whole lot of keyboard features here. Uh, the only thing that I, I would uh, suggest is that uh, there is a brief mention here with regard to safety and using your keyboard. Um, a couple of things. Number one, keep the keyboard out of reach of children three years of age or under. And there's various reasons for that, but we do have a cord back here which could become a choking hazard um, if they end up getting it wrapped around their necks or various parts of their body. Uh, that wouldn't be a good thing. And of course, a keyboard with keycaps on it, uh, it does have small pieces uh, that could become dislodged and become a choking hazard as well. Uh, there may be various pinch points too if kids don't know what they're doing and even this collapsing hinge at the back here uh, could become a pinch point if uh, someone gets their fingers trapped in the end of it and we end up uh, with their body weight uh, on that hinge. So just something to keep in mind. Um, outside of that ergonomics posture. I have the keyboard kicked up at a slight angle. Just remember, keep your wrist straight. Try to avoid the side-to-side -side movement. This is one of the reasons why the Alice keyboard layout has become quite popular recently because when you're reaching for a shift key, you can see what's happening here. All right, I have to bend my wrists side-to-side -side like this. You'll feel it in this joint if you're doing it very often. Um, I highly recommend keeping the keyboard, if it's on your desktop as I have it here, I like to sit fairly far back so that my, my arms are a little more stretched out and this doesn't seem to be that much of a stretch. As I start to move the keyboard closer towards me, there's a greater tendency to have to flex this that much more because my, my forearms are coming in at the keyboard at a different angle. The further away it is from me, the more linear, I guess, uh, the keyboard becomes to the point where, for those engineers out there, if there's such a thing as a vanishing point, the further away the vanishing point is, the straighter the lines uh, may end up appearing. So anyway, um, that is the Cherry keyboard and they make great switches. Um, I have to say, based on what I've seen so far, I'm going to spend some time with it, but uh, based on what I've seen so far, uh, they do make a fairly decent keyboard as well. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I just want to exercise it with uh, a little bit uh, long, longer time uh, on the keys. I'm always concerned about the A and the caps lock key, uh, especially if they're too close together. Just making sure that I for whatever reason I just don't have the tendency to to get the A and the caps lock key confused or if I graze by it as I'm pressing the A key down it might be a little bit of personal training on my part but I have had some experiences with some keyboards where I actually changed the caps lock key out uh, with a different key cap just to give it a little more gap but uh, Outside of that, the, uh, the pitch between the keys seems pretty good. So thank you for watching. We'll get into a few more technical specs if there's anything uh, worth mentioning otherwise. But uh, that's it for the Cherry Keyboard. Okay, Cherry Keyboard 10.0 N, Mechanical Keyboard. Thank you for watching.